Uh, our next speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Kelly Lee Stretcher. Um, so, uh, let me introduce uh, her. Uh, she's the co-founder and president at uh, Patient Care Heroes. Patient Care Heroes is an organization created to honor the people who have sacrificed their lives in caring for patients. Uh, she is the chief of uh, reproductive medicine and uh, healthcare equity at uh, American Initiatives uh, for Military Support. Uh, Dr. Stretcher did her MD at uh, Medical College of Wisconsin and her residency in OBGYN at uh, Michigan State University. Um, th this is an amazing project and uh, I was really impressed with uh, you know, what uh, Dr. Stretcher is doing. So let's hear from her. Hi, I'm Kelly Stecker. I'm an OBGYN from Minnesota. I'm a full-time clinician and I've always had a real passion for mental health, patient safety, and advocacy in terms of racial equity, gender equity, and um, really anti-bullying in the workplace. And so I've, I've done a lot of work in that space. And as I was talking to our medical community about those things and burnout, I really realized what a void we had in the mental health space. And that's one of the reasons why I started Patient Care Heroes. So I'm, I'm the co-founder um, and president of Patient Care Heroes, which I'm gonna be talking to you about today. So when we look at the data, a lot of this is pre-COVID, right? And so it's really important to note that these numbers are probably actually lower than we would expect now. And unfortunately, we see medical students, residents, and full-time clinicians after they're out of training having significant rates of depression, having significant rates of burnout. There was just a study done on nurses that are looking at about 60% of a, a burnout rate at this point. And so with this, we realize, okay, with the pandemic and the extra stress and everything that people are going through, these rates are likely higher. And we're unfortunately kind of planning for the future because as stress and moral injury and PTSD and everything grows, we know that we're going to see higher rates of mental illness among care providers. And we also know that we're going to see a higher rate of suicide. Um, so pre-pandemic, we were already looking at approximately 11% uh, rate of suicidal ideation. And so of course, that's higher than people who actually go through with suicide and, and complete that. However, it's really, I think, striking that this is where we were at before the pandemic. So do we, as clinicians, as physicians, as people in the medical community, do we get care? And really kind of the short answer is no. And, and so we have to kind of scale back and look at what are the barriers to seeking care. And so, of course, there's stigma, right? I mean, anyone that you talk to nationwide, even people who are the, the biggest advocates for mental health, we realize that if we come out with our concerns with anxiety or depression, we're kind of looked at as a little bit weaker, right? And so as a OBGYN, I see this all the time with my patients, even, um, even physician patients who are afraid to admit that they have postpartum anxiety and depression. And certainly, as you all know, with the pandemic, those rates have even increased significantly as well. And so we're watching those patients. So if we're going to be so cautious about our patients, why aren't we cautious with each other? And I really think that that's a critical take-home message is, why can we have empathy for the people we're taking care of, but not each other as a system, not each other as a cohort of physicians or nurses or a medical community? Um, and when you really delve into the reasons people are not seeking care, one of the common things that I hear is they're worried about how it's going to affect their license. And so looking into that a little bit further, each state has a different schematic for physician licensing. So each state has a different board, each state has a different application process. Some states even require you to um, basically have a morality clause, right? So I was talking to a physician from Massachusetts and they actually have to say that they are a moral physician and have that notarized. Um, and so everyone is different and that's really kind of one of the big issues with addressing barriers as well is I don't think physicians understand that each state is governed differently and that the expectations are probably different as well. Um, and when we look at that, for example, Minnesota, we have to declare on there if we've sought mental health uh, assistance and people don't want to be honest with that or they don't want to seek care 
so that they have to be honest about it, right? And so that kind of gets into that. All right, so there's the stim stigma. There's the pull of suck it up mentality that all of us have been trained with. And then just systemically and how we prepare physicians and get them licensed is another barrier onto itself. So really we're looking at an epidemic of people who are being untreated, who are going through life, which systems hopefully would appreciate because we are less effective. We have decreased patient safety when we're depressed and anxious. Um, and, and a lot of people are going to have PTSD from dealing with the COVID pandemic. And a lot of people are even leaving medicine altogether, which is also another concerning point, certainly. Um, and for anyone who really wants to look at some of this in a little bit more depth, there's actually an amazing film by Robin Simon, who put together this film. This is kind of her advocacy project, and it's called Do No Harm. And this film really looks at physician suicide and the reasons behind it pre-pandemic, right? So I think this really gives a good uh, look into these things for anyone who's wondering about where these things start, how they develop, where people are at. Um, and, and we really need to uh, come at this as a community because we are still losing amazing, wonderful physicians to a suicide all the time. Um, and obviously, as I stated earlier, we would love to get more research into this area because post the start of pandemic, uh, we really don't have the data looking at how prevalent these issues are. And I think that we would be alarmed, quite frankly, how negatively this has impacted people, um, how people are going to leave medicine and how people are still not seeking care, even though we are now in 2021 and have more of those resources readily available. Unfortunately, here in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, we've lost um, a couple of amazing physicians, right? So we lost a first year family medicine physician. So a young man who's just starting out in residency. And we also lost a 36 year old mom of three, right? So this is Dr. Gretchen Butler. She comes from a family of physicians. And when I look at her, I see me, right? Cause we're the same age. We're both young, you know, we're both moms. Um, no one in her family saw this coming. And so these are really some of the reasons why I wanted to create patient care heroes. We want to create the safe haven for medical workers. We want to have people be able to come onto our site and have this hub where there's no judgment where we're there. We want to be able to provide barrier free access to mental health resources. At this point, we do have some support groups that are available. We have different community partners that are working with us to make sure that we have some of these groups for people to go to. We also are partnering with the Minnesota Mental Health Advocates who have more resources as they've existed longer than we have. And so they're working with us to create awareness and to really move forward on some of these issues. Um, and we want to work with national organizations to help with burnout. Um, and really a lot of the stuff that we want to do is humanize the public health information. We want to correct the disinformation. Um, we've allied with this as our shot, one of the um, organizations that's really been on the forefront of this and physician-led organization as well. And we want to make sure that we can come together as a community because people really are not appreciating the healthcare providers in their, in their communities. Um, at one point, people were told not to wear their scrubs outside because of fear of verbal or physical assault due to the misinformation that was being spread about the pandemic. And so we really wanna make people have the ability to be proud in what they are doing for the community and really be able to find improved job satisfaction um, by providing resources. And this is this is an organization that we really want to see extend, you know, long term because this is not just a pandemic issue. This is a forever issue as we have seen in the medical community. And so we want to make sure that we're meeting these needs and able to pivot to meet these challenges and using this to partner with other organizations to be advocates in the legislative space uh, to, to really work on some of these things and innovate and create policy changes to help us with mental health for physicians. Um, and, and I don't know how much you all know about that, but there's legislative changes that have been proposed. There's a bill that was proposed by Tim Kaine in July called the Breen Bill. It was reintroduced last week. And we've been trying to kind of push on them with that. 
because we really want concrete changes to exist. Number one, the thing that I think would be the easiest to do is to change physician license structure so that it's universal across the nation. Um, and so working with our organization and other organizations to try to create those changes is a, is a, a passion for me. So this is really kind of how we're going to start doing things. Obviously, awareness, you know, people don't even know that physician suicide or mental health issues are a big deal, right? People assume they're doctors, they have insurance, they should have access. And so we really want to make sure that people are aware of that. We want to make sure to honor individuals who died from COVID and who have died from work-related causes, right? We had a shooting at Alina here in the Twin Cities as well, and a nurse unfortunately died from that, we want to be able to tell her story. Um, and so we want to really create an opportunity for people to come together, to grieve and to understand where we've come from. Um, and aside from that, we really do want to provide people with resources that are going to benefit their life, their quality of life. Uh, and for example, I know how hard it is even for two working parents to, you know, send their kids to camp, right? I was just looking at costs for um, school for my two kids. And if I couldn't afford that, I don't want my kids to not be able to go to something that's going to benefit them academically. And so I want to create a situation where you can apply for grants or funds to send your kids to these different events when you are a healthcare worker. Because I really think we do need to respond to the needs of our community to make sure that they are feeling valued and that they can stay in these systems. And really kind of using our platforms that we create with this to launch into you know, more advocacy and partnering with other organizations that way as well. So these are some of the, the partnerships that we're working on right now. Um, and I certainly have a few more that are in, uh, in process. And so um, we'll be able to work with organizations from around the country and actually um, even some individuals internationally are interested in doing um, a UN campaign to work on basically where we're at with, with medical workers, especially um, meeting with people from the UK and Australia who had such an issue with gender equity issues in the news as of late. They're very interested in working with me to do a, a UN campaign looking at gender equity in the medical community internationally and also access to mental health care and decreasing the stigma. So that's really important to me as well. So at this point, our biggest needs are basically people who want to be involved, right? So people who want to volunteer mental health resources, um, people who are advocates who want to be involved in legislative changes and making calls and making the efforts. Uh, we need sponsors, right? Um, and we're in the process of applying for our 501c3, we're currently an LLC. And what that means is um, we can lobby. So with a 501c3 structure, we're not able to lobby. And so we're gonna keep that and also have the 501c3, but we are going to be coming a um, temporarily a subsidiary of mental health advocates in Minnesota, who is a current 501c3 so that we can do more fundraising uh, just so we can meet everyone's needs and make sure that we're promoting this as much as we can. So anyone who wants to be involved, wants to tell a story, has a hero that they want to talk about. We just had a couple moms submit stories about their children, which is, I think, amazing. Um, and then anyone who really wants to kind of spread the word are things that, that we are in need of right now. The other thing I really wanted to, to talk about is physicians don't have this big overarching voice, right? So oftentimes we are left to our own devices. We're very segmented into our specialties. And so the other thing that I wanted to do with Patient Care Heroes is to make sure that we are providing a resource and a microphone for other people, right? And so we're going to want to interview people and do podcasts and make sure that we're out there relaying the important stories that people have to share with everyone. Um, and aside from that, we really do want to become good advocates for the medical community. And so I am going to be teaming up with an organization that's also newly formed, um, Speak Out Ortho, which was created by orthopedic surgeons, which is an organization that was created to give women in orthopedic surgery a voice. And I think that that's really important because 
besides OBGYN, ortho is one of those specialties that is very highly um, undergoes a lot of gender equity issues, uh, a lot of harassment, a lot of intimidation and bullying. And so they're starting their journey with telling stories. And so we're going to be partnering with them so that we can give a platform to every woman in the healthcare arena, the ability to speak on this issue. Because I think physicians very much don't want to go against the hierarchy. They don't want to tell their stories because one, there's fear of retaliation, right? Uh, two, people just have this fear of same thing with mental health, speaking out about mental health is people have this fear that if they speak out with this, they are going to be kind of shunned or the black sheep of the community, right? And so people live in fear and they just kind of get through it. And I think that having an organization where we can come together and give a megaphone to these people who need to create awareness around this issue is really important. Um, and then we're gonna be working with AMWA um, the Women's Association to make sure that we can move some of these strategies forward as well. So Patient Care Heroes really wants to honor our community, the physician community, make sure that people have these resources, make sure that we're honoring people going forward. And with our, our hub, our site, we are also going to be selling different things so that people can purchase that and it goes directly back to funding the, the resources and the programs that we have. Um, aside from that, we are going to create basically like a virtual yearbook on the site and the virtual yearbook is going to be have give people the ability to honor their loved ones that have passed, right? So if you had someone who died from COVID in your family, right? If you had a physician or a nurse friend that has has died, we want you to be able to upload videos and pictures and have a dialogue with people and get support and ask for things that you need and create that community dynamic. Because one of the other huge issues is we haven't had an opportunity to grieve as a community, right? And so if you look at, you know, disasters that have happened around the world, and I mean, even 9-11, there's a place where we can come together and grieve. Even uh, in the UK, they, the, Recently, unfortunately, with that lovely 33-year-old woman who was killed, there's a place where people can come and they can lay flowers. And so for our community, we don't have that. The pandemic touches everybody. And so we haven't had a collective grieving moment. And so the issue with that is we don't have that place we can come together. And so we're hoping that with this and teaming up with or other organizations, we can create that ability for people to come together and grieve and communicate and share their stories and upload videos and, and be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. So that's, that's the other, one of the other big reasons why we even started this is to create more of an awareness that we are all human beings. We're trying to do the right things. This is how it's affecting us. We're not just a number, right? We're, we're people that are trying to protect the community and be involved. And I think that through the course of the pandemic, a lot of people have felt like they have not been supported by either national organizations or local organizations. And I really want to make sure that they are feeling supported and like they have the resources that they need so that they can move forward in the medical community because I don't want to lose more good people to suicide, burnout, or just, you know, fed up with how things are run. So that's another one of our big goals. And that is it.